is impacting generations by empowering them to live out their God-given purpose. We are seeing people ignited to spread the love and the hope and the grace and the mercy of Jesus like wildfire, like never before. I believe that as we live in surrender, we then step into miracle territory. We're equipping people of all ages to know God, find freedom, discover their purpose, and then go make a difference. culture of Christ-centered worship. At Hope City, it's all about Jesus. We want to touch heaven and shake the earth. God has called us to change the world and we are ready. This city is ready to see God do what only God can do. We're not done yet. We're not backing up, backing down, or backing off. This is just the beginning. I believe that as we love God and we love people, we will change the world for the glory of the King. My name is Ben. And my name is Sean. What is up to all of our viewers out there? Come on. We have people literally viewing us from all over the Everywhere. world. And you could have been doing anything else, but you're viewing us. You're here with us right now. Come Thank on. you so much for being here. We're so pumped that you guys are here. And That's right. I got to shout out everybody right now and let you know we're pumped that you're a part of what God is doing here at Hope City. And we know that you're fired up about it too. So if you, in this moment, want to click the share button on whatever platform is on, right. this is what we always say. Sharing, sharing is, is caring. caring. That's right. So if you click the share button right now in this moment on whatever platform you're joining us from, it's going to share it with the people that are in your friends list that maybe you don't even remember friending five years ago from Alaska from that one family Alaska. trip. Go and on. now all of a sudden it's going to show up on their feed. They're going to be like, what's this Hope City? And they're going to join in and get to hear a gospel-filled message. Or maybe right now in this moment, there's people that are watching this and you're saying, I know someone that needs to hear this message. You can click the share button and send it directly to them. And that makes such a massive massive impact in people's lives. So go ahead right now and click the share button. That's right. It's because you hit the share button that we have so many different and new people viewing us for That's the first right. time. If it is your first time viewing us, go to hopesy.com forward slash FTG. There you can fill out a connection card. Yeah, that's right. And when you fill that out, we're not going to bug you or bother you. We're not going to show up at your house, knocking on your door, saying, what's up? What's going on? All we're going to do is we're going to send you one email just to say thank you so much for joining us here this weekend. And right now, we're going to hop into a new segment that we're calling Tell Me Why Ain't, ain't Nothing Nine, But It's not actually a Backstreet part. Boys. All it is is it's an opportunity where what we did is we asked all of the people that were a part of our dream team here at Hope City, we reached out to them and we said, hey, tell me why. Why do you serve? Why do you come in week in, week out and serve and be a part of what God's doing here at Hope City? And we heard some amazing stories. So we actually got one story from Shay and here's what Shay had to say about why she serves. What she said, Shay? I serve because God's called me to serve, and I love it. Serving on the Church Online platform has kept me connected with the church. I still feel like I'm live and in person, even while I'm on my couch at home. Come on, somebody on your couch at home right now. Chillaxing. 
<laughs> I keep serving week in and week out because that's what God called me to do. It gives me joy and hope to serve others and other people should join in and serve so that they can have connection in the midst of social distancing. You should serve so that you can be a part of something bigger than yourself. Man, Ben, I really love that story. Listen, if you want to serve, go to hopesy.com forward slash growth track. There you have the opportunity to go through our growth track and discover your purpose right. and make a difference and just become a part of the uh, dream team. Go to hopesy.com forward slash growth track. Hit the get started button and go from there. Come on. What are you waiting for? You need to do it. And guys, right now, there's a new initiative that we're starting here at Hope City, something brand new. What is that? And it's called HCX. HCX. Come on, everybody. Come on, somebody. So HCX, it's an opportunity for people just like you watching right now that are saying, I want to take my leadership to the next level. I want to soar to new heights. And HCX is an opportunity for you to come alongside our staff, learn from us, learn our systems and our processes and why we do things the way that we do them. And then you will get the opportunity to learn from our team so that you can go to the next level in your leadership. So if you want more information, information about HCX, you can go to hopecity.com slash HCX for more information there. We can't wait to see you guys there. Can't wait to see you. Guys, it's going to be an amazing Sunday. Oh, we yeah. have Pastor Chad Beach here with Woo! us from Zoe Church in Los Angeles. Come He's on. fired up. It's going to be a fun time. <clears throat> but before we hop into the message, let's join our team in worship. Lift your voices together. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hope City. We are so glad that you're here with us today. Let's worship. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance the exodus of my heart and you found me you freed me held back the waters of my release oh Yahweh let's sing this you're the God who fights for me Lord of
a Hope City original song over and over again. I love to hear the sounds coming out of this house, and I'm fired up about what God is doing right here at Hope City and right there at your house, which Hope City now is one church in thousands of locations all over the world. And we're welcoming all of you guys in from wherever you're watching from. In fact, right now, wherever in the world you're watching from, would you let us know on whatever platform you're on? Just type it there in the chat right now. Just let us know where you're watching from so that you can also see that some of your cousins in your same town are watching with you. Literally, we have people from everywhere watching. Yeah. It's been shocking to me. And uh, I think it actually shows us the, the reach of the church yeah. um, to see how many people are tuning in online. And though we can't join together in this exact moment, we are still together. Right. Don't, don't get confused. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. We are still in one accord and we're seeing the power of God move right now. I feel good. I don't know why I'm wearing a corduroy jacket. I don't know. I don't know why. It's because uh, Carla picked it out and I wear whatever she tells me to wear. Thank God for family who makes me wear real Really hot things, and thank God also, I'm not actually preaching today, or I would not be able to wear this. <laughs> I'd be a pool of sweat today. We are blessed to have one of my closest friends and just a powerful voice, a, a highly sought after voice. He's preached literally all over the world, and, uh, and he's been preaching all over the world for a long time. And uh, Chad and Julia Veach started uh, Zoe Church in uh, Los Angeles and have taken the city by storm. Um, they're not just an influential church, they're an impacting church. They're impacting the culture. I've been there to preach at their church. In fact, while I was preaching at their church, it was so awesome. They were like actors, like people that you, like Chris Pratt was on the second row. Like I'm preaching and they're shouting me down. They're like, amen. I was like, this is weird, Jurassic World. Um, Right there on the, it's okay, I'm sorry. Chris, if you're watching, I love you, man. It was awesome. But I'm so glad to have um, the, the pastor of celebrities and regular people alike. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome right now, Chad B. This world is not our home. We're not citizens of this earth. We are going to a better reality. Somebody thank him right now that we serve the God that eliminates the stuff that is going to detour your life. Give him a praise today. If you're grateful, a greater dream has come to pass. Amen and amen. Welcome to church. What an honor to be at Hope City Church. Make some noise in the chat for your church. Show me the best emoji that describes this amazing church. What an honor to be uh, with some of my favorite people in the whole world. Do you love your pastors today? Come on, let's make some noise for the pastors of this amazing church. I love all the Fosters, uh, but I especially love your senior pastor, Pastor Jeremy Foster. Unbelievable. I call him the cool cowboy because he is the coolest cowboy God has ever created. And who would have thought that God would uh, raise up not just a man and a leader, a pastor, but a church that God in his infinite wisdom knew that our world would need a church like this, correctly named it hope for this city and even beyond that hope for the world. And so I just want to say, I don't know if you knew this before today, but I'm from Los Angeles. My name is Chad Veach in Spanish because I'm half Mexican, y'all. You pronounce that Shad Beach, okay? But I'm coming to you from L.A. today. I don't know if you knew before today that you had a crazy Mexican cousin in L.A., but you have one, and I'm here today. And I'm here to say thank you, thank you, thank you for being resilient, being faith-filled, being full of hope, full of life, being people of encouragement, people of grace. And let's just thank God for not just what he's doing, but for what he's about to do the rest of this year. Come on, clap. And thank God, and even clap right now a little louder for your pastors one more time. I love you so much. Well, again, my name is Chad. I live in Los Angeles, and my wife and I, we started a church called Zoe Church. We're almost five years old, and uh, we have four beautiful children together. Our ages are two, four, six, eight. Who do you appreciate? Mom. <laughs> Every day is Mother's Day in our house. But uh, we're 11 years married, four kids, and just having the time of our life um, and have a lot of fun. So the next time you're in L.A., when all this is over, come to L.A. and visit your cousin church, Zoe Church. Does that sound good? Okay. Do you have a Bible with you today? Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians uh, 13, uh, go to verse number 12. 
and I'm going to read some scriptures to you, and then I will explain what the author intended to say. So 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I'll read if you're like, I don't understand anything that was written right there. Don't, I'm going to explain it. Just let's read first. It says, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Anybody excited that this earth is not your home? Anybody excited we are destined to a greater place? So I just, I, I want to tell you, I know there's pandemics and all kinds of crazy stuff in this year, but you're not a citizen of this planet. You are destined to a greater place. And when we get there, we will see him face to face. Oh, I love this. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. So what the Bible's saying is God knows everything about you. I, I, some of you are like, I, I, there's some things I've been trying to hide from God. No, no, no. He loves you just the way you are. He just loves you way too much to leave you that way. You're fully known by God. He, we're going to land on 13. It says this. And now these three things remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Now you're like, man, how are you going to come into our church and preach a message and draw out hope and say that hope is not the greatest one? I'm, I know we're at Hope City, but I'm preaching the Bible today, okay? <laughs> now these three remain. Faith, Hope City, <laughs> and love. But the greatest of these is love. The author of this book is a guy by the name of Paul, the Apostle Paul. If you don't know much about church, he had the gift to go into cities and start churches. He would do this all over. He'd do it in Thessalonica. He would do it in Ephesus or Philippi. Right now, he's writing to a church in a city called Corinth, and he's writing to them in the chapter before he wrote about spiritual gifts. He says, you know, there's gifts from the Spirit of God, which I just want to remind you Three things is truthful for your life. You are born of the Spirit, you are full of the Spirit, and you have gifts from the Spirit. Let me say it again for the people in the back. Like, Chad, there is no people in the back. We're watching in our homes. You're born of the Spirit. That's why when people are like, I'm not spiritual, you are born of the Spirit. Okay, you are born of the Spirit, you are full of the Spirit, and you have gifts from the Holy Spirit. So chapter 12, he's like, there's all these gifts. But then as he enters into chapter 13, he's like, none of them really mean anything without love. In fact, he's trying to get his audience, his church, not to buy into gifts, but to buy into love. In fact, he's trying to say, these, these things will not last. You cannot take your gift to heaven. You can't take your money to heaven. You can't take your house to heaven. You can't take your following to heaven. There's only three things that will last forever, and it's faith, hope, and love. Faith will last forever. Hope will last forever, and the love of God which transcends all understanding, will last forever. Come on, clap right now in the chat. If you're grateful, I'm building my life on that which will last forever. In fact, I want to preach a message. You can write down the title. It's called, You Can Cancel Everything But This. You can cancel every. Listen, we live in a cancel culture. You can, you, culture thinks you can cancel people. A lot of people are like, yo, 2020's canceled. All kinds of things. Graduations are canceled. The, I, I got a notification this, the next school year in LA, they're trying to cancel school. I wept. <laughs> trying to send my kids away for six hours a day. <laughs> canceled it. Me and my wife held each other. We're like, what are we going to do? School's canceled. Concerts are canceled. They canceled March Madness. They canceled the Masters. They canceled Coachella. I was kind of happy when they canceled Coachella because in L.A., all of LA, L.A. leaves to Palm Springs. It's not really good for church on Sunday, so I was kind of happy about that one. <laughs> Everything's canceled. You can cancel everything but this. You can't cancel faith. You can't cancel hope. You can't cancel love. I was watching TV the other day. Don't you appreciate a good commercial? Like when you see a good commercial, I just want to be like, hey, good job, guys. <laughs> I don't know who made that, but you know, shout out to the creative team. Did a good job. I don't know what it was for, 
But this commercial was talking about graduations and, you know, graduations aren't canceled. It's got this graduate in his, his outfit and they're around like a Zoom link and his birthdays aren't canceled. And it's like a family again around like a Zoom link and first words aren't canceled. It's a little baby, you know, saying its first words is talking about what can't be canceled. I just want to encourage you. Faith is not canceled this year. Hope is alive and well. He called us Hope City. Can't cancel love right now. Come on, let's pray and believe that God will come and speak to us today. Come on, let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it's a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. We thank you, God, that you are good, you are kind, you are loving, and you are gracious. And so today, open up our eyes so we can see you. Open up our ears so we can hear you. Do the unique, profound thing that happens when your word goes forward. We ask it would land on good soil today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said together, Come on, one more time. Clap in the chat. Clap here in the room right now. This feels good even on the, on the YouTube and the Facebook just to throw out a little, little something. On Instagram, give me a good, good emoji today. Now, I, I, want, I want you to take those three thoughts, those three truths, faith, hope, and love, and I, I just want to use your imagination in a story about Jesus in John chapter 4. It's one of my favorite stories about Jesus. John chapter 4. It says that Jesus, he had to go through Samaria. Now this is amazing to me. If you don't know much about the Bible, Samaritans were the least of the least. They were the scum of the scum. But it says, nevertheless, Jesus as a Jew had to go through Samaria. So I want to preach to some people that are like, ah, I don't want to go through this year. I don't want to go through this pain. I don't want to go through this situation. No, I just want to tell you, you got to go through it. You can't go over it. You can't go around it. You can't go under it. You got to go through your Samaria. I don't know what your Samaria looks like, but Jesus knew in order for, I, for me to get breakthrough, I got to go through this thing. So he had to go through Samaria. When he gets there, he goes to a well. There's a woman serving drinks at the well. When Jesus gets there, he kicks out his crew. He knows these guys are not about to understand what I'm about to do. So I've got to, in order for me to do the work and the assignment of my life, I need to bring some separation from this crew. So he makes up an excuse. He's like, guys, I think they got a subway in town. Five dollar footlongs. Let's go. I want to take the Italian. Can you guys go? He, he doesn't want any food. He's sending them away because they are not about to understand what he's about to do. Listen, I just want to bring some understanding to your life. You need some separation for the preparation that God has for you. Not everybody's going to understand what you're posting right now. Not everybody's going to understand why you're so faith-filled. Not everybody's going to understand why you're loving your neighbor. Not everybody's going to understand why you're so hopeful. But you've got to bring some separation right now because God is preparing you. You're going through what you got to go through for you to step into your God-given potential. Come on, clap right now and thank God. I, not everybody's going to get this. Some of your family's like, why are you so sweet? You should be like, why are you that way? No, don't do that. It's not godly. Okay, but. So he sends away his crew and he comes to a well and he baits a woman who's from a total different people group into a conversation. What I love about God is God is baiting you. He is wooing you into his presence. Some of you, maybe somebody shared the link today. Maybe you found us on Instagram. Maybe it was YouTube or Facebook. We don't know how you got here, but God is wooing you into his presence. He asked this woman for a drink. He don't want a drink. He doesn't even need it. She has nothing to offer him. He has everything to offer her. This is fascinating. Because a well is sitting at a well. Jesus, living water, is sitting there asking this woman who thinks she has no shot at the gospel for a drink. He doesn't need a drink. He is trying to get her into freedom. He's trying to get her into her God-given potential. When she says, yes, I'll give you a drink, he's like, you know, if you knew who was talking to you, you'd ask me for a drink. And she's like, who do you think you are? like if you knew who you were talking to I have a drink to offer that if you drink from from my water you will never thirst again 
In fact, if you drink what I have to offer, rivers of living water will flow from the inside of you. And she's like, um, sir, this is wild. He's like, yeah, go get your husband. Tell him something's about to change. And she's like, oh, oh sir, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a husband. And he goes, you're right. You've had five. And the one that you're living with right now, you're not married to. What I love about Jesus is his spirituality is attractive. He doesn't look at this woman and go, I, Jesus, the Messiah, am about to give you a word, word, word of knowledge. He is operating in spiritual gifts. He's just not calling them. I need you to understand, Hope City. We need to operate in this world, in this culture, with our spirituality and the way we follow Jesus so attractive to an outside world. He says, you're right. The one you've had five husbands and the one you're with is the sixth man and you're not even married to him. It's interesting that the biblical number for six is man. But here's Jesus, the seventh man in her life. The biblical number for seven is completion. It's perfection. He's saying, I know you're broken. I know you're bruised. I know you're battered. I know you're hurting. But the seventh man just showed up and the seventh man's got a new drink. Let me give you something that will well up. Oh, I feel like preaching at Hope City Church today. He offers this woman a drink. She receives the good news of Jesus. And the Bible says she runs back to her city. She runs back to her village and tells everybody about a man that changed her life. Like, I just, I want you just to imagine. You, you, ever, you ever talk to yourself? Don't act like I'm crazy. You talk to yourself too. Years ago, I read a book. It said, what to say when you talk to yourself. It's a great book. I learned how to talk to myself. And so I I wonder what her inner dialogue was like pre-Jesus. Like, I wonder if she was sitting there, you know, like, I don't know if you've ever worked a job before. I don't know if you got a J-O-B. Young people, my first job was Burger King. Don't hate. The Whopper is real, okay? And so, and so I I remember the the in-between times when you're not busy and you think about things. I wonder what she was thinking about at the well. I wonder if she was acknowledging, I'm broken. I'm exhausted. There's no more virtue left in me. I'm not in a good place. I'm not, I don't even want to be with this guy. He's got no job. I'm paying for all of our bills at this well water. I I wonder what her inner dialogue was pre-Jesus. I know what her her, her post dialogue was post-Jesus because she went back and she said, I'll tell you what remains of my life. I've got a new faith. I've got a new hope and I've got a new love. Come on, anybody grateful? When you encounter Jesus and you encounter the good news of who he is, you cannot stay the same. And the first thing that happens is you get infused and injected with three things that will last forever. I'm going to give you three things to write down today. Write down the first one. I have faith in a big God. Oh, this is what I love about Pastor Jeremy. He's a big faith guy. He's got cowboy faith. That's the best kind of faith. He, he's got faith. You know, we, our church right here, we are built on faith. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. I want to tell you right now, if you got a little God, you've got big problems. But if you got a big God, you got little problems. In fact, 2020, 2020 is the year. Stop telling God how big your mountains are. Start telling your mountains how big your God is. There's something about faith. In fact, the Bible says faith is what pleases God the most. Faith is what honors God the most, and it's what God mostly honors. He's about faith, people. Faith don't go by what we see. We don't go by what we feel. The just, we live by faith. This is a faith life now. What is faith? By definition, it is trust, belief, and confidence. So it's saying this year, I'm going to trust you more. I'm going to have more confidence in you than I do the economy, than I do in politicians, and than I do in myself. My confidence is in the name of the Lord. I'm going to believe. I'm not going to unwaver. I'm going to hold fast to my confession. God is good. God is real. God is for me. Who can be against me? It's faith. Look at 1 Peter chapter, chapter 1. May the thought of this cause you to jump for joy. Even though lately you've had to put up with grief of many trials. Everybody's like, who you preach to do? But these only reveal the sterling core of your faith 
which is far more valuable than gold that perishes, for even gold is refined by fire. Your authentic faith. Oh, I just love this. Your authentic faith. There is nothing better than the real McCoy. There is nothing better than something that's genuine. Again, I'm Mexican. Get them fake tortillas out of my sight. I want that authentic. Who am I preaching to right now? I felt the ghost. God's bringing you into authentic faith. Remember, there's three types of faith in this world. There's crazy faith, like believing for miracles and signs and wonders and buildings and crazy faith. There's desperate faith. You know, like the, the woman that reached out the hem of his garment with the issue of blood. Or remember the, the father that came with the sick daughter. Desperate faith. But then there's tested faith. You, you're in a tested faith year. He's testing your faith to see if it's real. See if it's authentic. Because we don't know if something's real until we test that thing. Years ago, I was in Australia, and I was preaching down there, and I walked up to this guy. He had Yeezys. I was like, I just, just wanted to acknowledge, you know, those are great shoes, okay? So I walked up to this guy. I was like, man, great. Those are nice shoes. Nice tennis shoes, man. He's like, yeah, mate. Thanks a lot, mate. They're fake. And I was like, bro, you definitely don't have to say that. Like, next time, just be like, yeah, mate, thanks. Because I, I didn't know they were fake. We wouldn't know if it's fake until we test. Your faith is being tested by God. Your authentic faith will result in even more praise, more glory and honor when Jesus, the anointed one, is revealed. Verse 8, you love him passionately, although you do not see him. But through believing in him, you are saturated with an ecstatic joy, indescribably sublime and immersed in glory. Oh, I love that. Because listen, there's a joy that's coming out of you. There, there, there's a new celebration. Why? It's I got faith. I got faith. In God. It's not just crazy faith. It's not just desperate faith. I'm being tested and I want to come through with shining colors. Give them an amen today. Come on, clap right here and just thank God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have faith in God. And we need faith like, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like, I don't know if you know the scriptures very much or know the old stories, but this is an amazing story about these three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know you got a good crew when you're rolling with guys like Shadrach, Meshach. Get over here, Abednego. Like, that's a, those are great names. And, and, and they, they lived in an era where the king, Nebuchadnezzar of this time, puts out a decree. And he says, if anybody does not bow down to, this fall, to, to these images these false gods, we are going to throw them into a fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they come to the king, they're like, no disrespect, man, but we've already chosen where our faith is. We've already chosen where our trust is. Our confidence is in a God that is alive, a God that is good, a God that is merciful, and I don't need your fake God. Remember, culture is always going to try and get you to bow down to something that can't deliver you, can't heal you, can't restore you, and can't, can't promise and write the checks it's promising to deliver. And they're like, no disrespect, man. We're just not going to do it. And so they bring the decree, and these guys refuse to bow. Watch what they say to the king. Daniel 3, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty hand. But even if he does not, It's an even if year. Listen to that part again. But even if he does not. See, what this year's about is saying like, I believe in for a job, but even if I don't get it. I, I, I don't want to move from this city, but even if I have to. I, I don't want to go through my Samaria, but even if. What's rising up on you is faith that says, even if it doesn't work, what if your mom doesn't get healed from cancer? What if someone does pass away from COVID-19? Even if I have to face the worst trial or the worst tribulation, you're going to find me with my hands raised and I'm going to worship my God. Give him some praise today. Even if, but even if he does not, 
we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of your gold you have set up, even if, even if, why? Because I know it's just my faith is being tested. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had the wisdom and the insight to understand this is a faith test. That we've had crazy faith before, we've had desperate faith, but this is, this is tested faith. Be encouraged because all that will remain is your authentic faith. So the first thing she walks away, she comes back to her town and she's like, I don't know what you, you know about me, but I got faith now. And she's like, by the way, number two, write this down. I have hope in greater days ahead. Oh, I love this. I got hope in even better days to come. I've got hope. Listen, remember faith is the builder, but hope is the architect. Faith is what builds your life daily, but hope is what dreams your life into existence. Some of you need some hope. You've lost hope. That's why this church is called Hope City. We're bringing hope to Houston, and we're bringing hope to the world. You, listen, hope is confident expectation. It's this confident, like, I know he's going to come through. I know he's going to show up. I know it's going to happen. Are there any hopeful people in the house today? Anybody have hope in our good God? Confident expectation. Y'all remember when the Golden State Warriors were good? Thank you, Jesus. They ain't no more. It's a new day. It's a new season. Okay, so there's that. But anyways, I'll never forget, you know, in the Steph Curry with the shot boy in that era when Steph Curry was hitting all those shots, and he's still hitting them, but, you know, remember that era, okay? The, I, I went to Oracle Arena for the first time. And the first time, because I've seen it so much on TNT and ESPN, I want to see it with my own two eyes. So I went to Oracle Arena, and we're sitting there, and I'll never forget the first time that I watched Steph Curry shoot the ball in person. And he catches the ball. When he got past the ball and catches it, I promise you, the entire arena stood up like he had already made the shot. He doesn't even barely have the ball. It's not released yet, and they already stood up. When he caught the ball, he released it. It's so smooth. It's so silky smooth. He released the shot. As it's in the air, people are already prematurely clapping. When it, when it goes in the hoop, the place goes nuts. But you know my favorite part is that before he ever shot it, they already stood in hope that he would make it. I need you to be hopeful this year. He's going to show up, and he's going to show off. I don't know what you know about my story. My daughter, my eight-year-old, she was born, her brain never formed. She was born with what is called smooth brain. And so we received this diagnosis from my daughter, and the doctor told us she'll never walk, she'll never talk, she'll never crawl, she'll never live to this many years, she'll never develop past this many months. And the doctor that day sat with my wife and I and gave us a death sentence for my daughter. I want to tell you, she is now eight years old. She has still never walked and never talked and never crawled and never rolled over. But I'll tell you, she's a living miracle and she's a, she's a testimony of the faithfulness and the goodness of God. Anybody thankful that doctors don't have the last say? And I have learned to be hopeful against a hopeful situation. Look here in Psalm, Psalm 33. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love. God is looking for a people that would say, I know it's bleak and I know it's meager and I know it doesn't look good, but I'm standing in hope. I'm, I've seen you show up. If you did it for Moses and you did it for David and you did it for Daniel and you showed up for Shadrach, me, you can show up for me. God, if you did it there, you can do it right here. If you did it then, you can do it right now. If you did it for those people, you can do it for my family. Clap and thank God. We get an infusion of hope. And I love that because hope is the architect. So hope will give you the dream. Hope will give you the, the, the plans. It's like, a, it's like a couple that wants to build a house and they sit down with the architect and they draw out the bathroom and they draw out the, you know, the living room and, and what the patio in the back will look like and they draw up the plans. Hope will sit you down and say, let me show you the geography. Let me show you the occupation. Let me show you what you, your legacy is going to look like. Let me show you what your children are going to walk into. Come on, we need hope in these days. So we got faith. We got hope and we got love. Write down number three. I love this one. I have a love for Jesus and my neighbors. I have a love for Jesus and my neighbors. 
Why that is so important is because there ain't nothing worse than the Christian that loves God but hates people. Don't point them out, but you, you, you know who I'm talking about. It's like they love the Lord. They hate their brother. You know, the Bible actually says in 1 John chapter 4, if you love God and hate your brother, you've never seen God. Because when you see God, he automatically breaks your heart for what breaks his. God's most passionate thing in the world is humans. He's obsessed with people. So she runs away from this well and she's got faith and she's got hope and she's been filled with love and she loves God. You you ever meet somebody, they love Jesus and you're like, oh, I want to love Jesus like you. You really love Jesus. I I don't know if I love Jesus. You really love Jesus. Like, Like God today is injecting you with a love for God like never before. And why do we love God? Why do we love him? We love him because he first loved us. We love, our love for God is a response to his love for us. Now, there are four types of love in the Bible. There's phileo love. That's, that's brotherly love. That's like, hey, bro, I love you. There, there, is, there is eros love. That's romantic. There's storge love. That's like affection. But the greatest love in all of the Bible is agape love. It's unconditional love. And Jesus here in the Bible is teaching us something about love. The greatest of these is love. There's three, but the greatest is love. I've got three boys. My, my two-year-old, four-year-old, and six-year-old, they're boys. They're, we're the Veach boys. Put your hands in the middle. Veach boys on three. One, two, three. Veach boys. <laughs> and they go wild, and they go crazy, and they're, 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 they're my guys, and we have so much fun. But my six-year-old's always pulling me aside, and he's always like, Dad, which one of us do you love the most? Which, 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 one, which one's your favorite, Dad? It's me, isn't it? I'm your favorite. The only one that would ask that is the one that thinks he is the favorite, right? It's not the one that thinks he's not liked. It's the one that thinks he's the, the most special kid. Dad, which one is your favorite? Whom do you love the most? Who is the most important? Paul the Apostle and God is trying to teach us something today from his word. There's three that remain, but the trump card is love. Faith, so important. Hope, truly essential. But above all that is love. What kind of love? Affection? Eros? Phileo? No, agape. Unconditional love. I love you when you don't deserve it. I love you when you break my heart. I love you when you turn your back. I love you so much. He had to go through Samaria. Why did he have to go through Samaria? It was love. He's like, his crew's like, man, why are we going through Samaria? He's like, in his head, like, it's love that made me do this. Hey, guys, can you go get something to eat? Um, I just, I'm really famished. He's not, he's lying. First time Jesus told a lie. Kind of a lie. Come on, you guys, it's a liberty. Just use your imagination. He sends them away because love made him send them away. He sits down on a well, a well sits on a well. He says, oh, hey, um, think I can get a drink? Love made him bring it up. And love made him read her mail. Love made him offer his very best to a woman that sat there very, very depleted and very tired very broken. Maybe today you feel like I do not deserve grace. (laughs) None of us do, you know. No one's sitting at the well today going like, yeah, you know, tithe my way here. It's my prayer life that lets me sit at this well. No, it is only by the grace and the sufficiency and the love of Jesus that we are sitting with perfection. How could someone that's broken and is messed up like you and I get to receive the grace and the love that surpasses knowledge and understanding would never know, but it's only love that makes him engage with us. And love baited this woman and love's baiting you today to say, I've got a plan for your life. And you might feel so broken and so empty and so shallow, but I'm about to infuse you with faith and I'm about to give you hope and you're about to be filled with love. I feel like shouting. 
because this thing fires me up. What gets me excited today? How great we are? No, how good he is. And he pursues me and he loves me. And even if he's got to go on a rabbit trail to find me, he'll find me at the well. He might find you in your car today. He might find you in your living room. You might be on your laptop or your phone or an iPad, but he's going to find you because he loves you. He's obsessed with you and he's for you. You can cancel everything this year, but this. You can cancel everything but the love of Jesus. He is for you. He is with you. And he's obsessed with you. He loves your children. He loves your spouse. But he loves you. I want to end today. I want to end with just reading this quote. This is a beautiful quote. And every once in a while you run across a quote that's like, you know, I I should probably share that. And I'm not going to post it today. I'm just going to read it to you today. Because I think it summarizes so well what God is trying to say to you and I. There is no safe investment. This is C.S. Lewis. There is no safe investment. To love it all is to be vulnerable. Love anything, and your heart will certainly be wrung and possibly be broken. If you want to make sure of keeping it intact, you must give your heart to no one, not even an animal. When I said that in L.A., people in L.A. don't like that, you know, because they love their dogs. They're like, I'm leaving this church not even an animal. Wrap it carefully, round with hobbies and little luxuries and avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in the casket or coffin of your selfishness. But in that casket, safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken. It will become unbreakable, impenetrable, irredeemable. The alternative to tragedy, or at least to the risk of tragedy, is damnation. The only place outside heaven where you can be perfectly safe from all the dangers and perturbations of love is hell. When I read that, it was like God telling me once again, I found you at the well. Can you go find others? Can you not just love me and your worship playlist and church, but would you love me enough to share the link? Love me enough to text a friend that doesn't know what faith or hope or love even looks like? Maybe you know someone in your family, your workspace, that doesn't have any faith or any hope or any love. God will use us because you realize Rivers of living water are flowing from you. So we say to God today, there's a lot canceled this year. It's a lot canceled. But these three, faith, hope, and love, they're not canceled. Come on, let's pray. Jesus, we thank you today. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love your outstretched arm that found us when we had no clue. God, when we had been going from addiction to addiction, from hookup to hookup, God, from this thing to the next thing, God, thank you that you found us and you stopped us in our tracks and filled us with your love. We pray right now, God, help people to get a glimpse of the reality of Jesus. We thank you that right now eyes are being opened to understand the good news and the gospel. It is for the undeserving. It is for the unearned. It is for broken sinners like us. And we thank you for it today in Jesus' name. If you're in your home or you're in your car, you've never said yes to Jesus, I'm going to count to three in just a moment. If you want to say yes, give your life over to God. Make the best decision that you've ever made. When I hit three, just say yes. You could whisper it. You could put it in the, in the, in the, in the comments. Whatever you want to do, just say yes. One two, three, yes. I know so many people right now just said that, yes. So let's say this prayer out loud. Come on, everybody here, repeat this with me. Say, Father God, thank you for grace. I receive your faith, your hope, and your love. Help me, God, to follow you and serve you. I love you. Come on, let's clap right now for every person that said yes to Jesus. Throw the fire emoji in the chat. Throw the clap emoji in the chat. If you said yes to Jesus in just a moment, someone's going to explain a little bit more about that decision. But we love you so much. We're so excited. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. 
I don't know what your past looks like, but I know what your future looks like. You are not going to be a citizen of this earth. You're going to heaven. You got faith, hope, and love. I love you so much. I'll see you in LA soon. Have a great day. Bro, bro, what a powerful message from Pastor Chad, man. That, that, this is so whew, good. So good. Yeah. If you said yes to Jesus for the first time, here's what I want you to Come do. On. Go to hopecity.com forward slash hope. There, we have free resources for you for you, to help you to take your next steps in Christ. That's right. And if you guys love that message from Pastor Chad as much as I did, I know that you guys are going to want his new book, Help, I Work With People. And right now in the middle of quarantine, we're probably working with people more now than we even were before with Ooh. all the extra Zoom calls, yeah. the FaceTime calls, or maybe you just stuck at home with your kids and you're like, help me, I work with people. They're just small, they're just small people. So if you want access to the first chapter of Pastor Chad's book, you can text people to 55444. That's people to 55444 so that you can get access to the first chapter of Pastor Chad's new book, Help, I Work With People. Are you you texting it right now? I'm texting it right now, bro. Somebody come help me with these kids, man. (laughs) Come on. Oh, my goodness. Hey, y'all, for real, stories like Shay's at the beginning, it wasn't that so powerful. Man, powerful. Man, it touches our hearts to know that there's people that are serving on our dream team that it makes that big of a difference in their life. And it wouldn't be possible. What Shay, stories like Shay's, it wouldn't be possible without your generosity, Hope City. So if you want to continue to sow into what God's doing here, you can text give online, one word, give online to 474747, or you can go to hopecity.com slash give to continue to sow into what God is doing here at Hope City. Hey, Ben, guess what? What's up? We have live virtual lobbies That's on our right. Facebook pages right now. Uh, we're doing them live at the 9 a.m., 11 a.m., 1 p.m., and 7 p.m. Yep. If you are not a part of our location Facebook groups, you need to be part of That's one. Right. Go to hopecity.com forward slash Facebook group to find the group that best suits you. And if maybe you're not great, located in the greater Houston area, yeah. you can join our online Facebook group. So shout out all my online family. What's Woo-hoo. up, y'all? We're glad that you're here joining us today. That's again, that's on Sundays after our 9, 11, Amen. 1, and 7 p.m. Right. services. Online family, we want you guys to join in and be a part. But guys, it's been an awesome Sunday. Yep. We really have. We've enjoyed this day so much. And I want to talk about something that Pastor Jeremy brings up a lot, and that's the one-year challenge. The one-year challenge. And the one-year challenge is where you just say, I'm going to go all in with my life for one year. I'm going to do everything that's happening at Hope City for one year. And if you do that, I promise you, I promise you, your life will never be the same. That means going all in and joining a connect group. It means all in, going through the growth track, joining the dream team. Maybe it means out there in Nebraska. Maybe it means on, you Nebraska. starting a watch party for your family in your home. So if you want more information about how you can take those next steps, go to hopecity.com slash connect groups for connect groups. Hopecity.com slash growth track for growth track. And hopecity.com slash watch parties for more information about watch parties. We've made it that simple for you. If you want a next step, if you're thinking about a next step, go to those today. Guys, it's been an awesome Sunday, and we love getting to hang out with y'all every yes. single Sunday. Yes, it's do. the joy Definitely. of our lives it to really get to is. hang out with y'all. Yeah. Let me pray for us, and then we'll roll out of here. Jesus, we love you. We thank you, and we praise you, Lord. We're so grateful for that you began a good work in us today, Lord, and we know that you're faithful and just to see it to completion. So do what only you can do. Jesus, it's all for your glory, and it's all for your name to make you great. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. We love Amen. you guys. We'll love see y'all next, we'll see y'all next see week. week. See ya. See ya.